Hello friends, welcome back to our video series on flight dynamics. So today we are starting with our second section which is steady maneuvers. In this section we will cover topics like climbing flight, absolute ceiling, service ceiling, range and endurance. So let us start with our first video on climbing flight. So let us consider an aircraft which is climbing at some flight path angle gamma. Now as it is climbing at some flight path angle gamma, so thrust is acting parallel to the flight path angle and drag is acting opposite to the flight path. Now lift will be acting perpendicular to the flight path and the weight will be acting vertically downwards. Weight can be broken into two components parallel and perpendicular to the flight path. Now if I write down the equations of equilibrium parallel to the flight path as well as perpendicular to the flight path, the equations will be L is equal to W cos gamma. So this is the equation of motion perpendicular to the flight path. So this is our equation 1 and t is equal to d plus w sin gamma so we have t is equal to d plus w sin gamma so this is the equation of the motion parallel to the flight path so this is our equation 2 now from our equation 2 now rewriting the equation 2 t is equal to d plus w sin gamma now i can find w sin gamma for, from the equation 2 so w sin gamma will be equal to t minus g and sin gamma will be equal to t minus g by w where t is thrust, d is drag and w is the weight of the aircraft. So now if I multiply v on both sides of the equation, I will get v sin gamma is equal to tv minus dv divided by weight of the aircraft. Now consider this figure. Now the aircraft is flying with some velocity v. So and the flight path angle is gamma. Uh, now if I break it into the vertical and horizontal component, I'll have v sin gamma as the vertical component of the velocity and v cos gamma as the horizontal component of the velocity. So v sin gamma is the vertical component of the velocity and this vertical component is also known as rate of climb. So my rate of climb is equal to v v is equal to v sin gamma. Now from this equation I can say that rate of climb is equal to t v minus g v by w. Now TV is the power available and DV is the power required. This we also studied in previous section. One thing which is to be noted down here is DV is the power required for cruise flight but here we are considering a climbing flight. So this assumption will be true only when the flight path angle is very small and if we consider the flight path angles below 20 degree then this assumption is somehow justified but if the flight path angles is are more than 20 degree then this assumption is not justified and then we have to find the power required from this equation. So now we can say that rate of climb is equal to power available minus power required by W. So assuming that the flight path angle is very small so this equation is then justified. So power available minus power required is also known as excess power. So this is the difference between the power available and the power required and this is also known as excess power. So rate of climb is excess power by weight of the aircraft. Now graphically if we see power available is the green line and power required is the red line. So the difference between the power available and the power required line gives you the excess power. Now this, this is the power available and power required curve for a propeller driven aircraft. So if I draw the power available and power required curve for a jet powered aircraft, this is how it is going to look like. So the power available line is passing from origin and it is inclined and this is the power required line this we studied in our previous section the difference between the power available and power required line again will give you the excess power now consider the excess power available near the stall speed or at the low speed of the two aircrafts so for a propeller driven aircraft we have high excess power available just above the V stall whereas for a jet powered aircraft the excess power available just above the V stall is quite low now high excess power gives an, a comfortable safety margin for a propeller driven aircraft during its landing approach in case uh, it is required for a sudden wave off. Now considering that graph again, so since the power available is almost constant for a propeller driven aircraft, so the maximum excess power will be, will be at a point where the power required is minimum. So this is the, if this is the point of minimum power required, so this will be the maximum excess power and hence we will get maximum rate of climb at this velocity. So what this practically means is that if the aircraft is flying at velocity corresponding to minimum power and pilot suddenly opens full throttle since the aircraft is having the maximum excess power at this velocity 
So aircraft will fly at the maximum rate of climb. Whereas if the aircraft is flying at some other velocity, let us say here and suddenly the pilot gives full throttle, then only, only this much excess power will be there and the aircraft will climb at a lower rate of climb. So this is clearly illustrated in this graph. So this is rate of climb versus velocity graph. So if the aircraft is flying at this velocity, then we have the maximum rate of climb. So this is velocity corresponding to max minimum power. So this is the minimum power velocity. And if the aircraft is flying with at some other velocity, then the rate of climb would not be the maximum, but a lower value. So this value keeps on decreasing till the maximum velocity. And at maximum velocity, there won't be any rate of climb. That, that means the aircraft cannot climb if the aircraft is flying at this velocity v max. So we may also draw a graph of vertical velocity versus horizontal velocity. Vertical velocity is nothing but the rate of climb. So if I draw vertical velocity on y axis and horizontal velocity on x axis, I will get a curve. Uh, this curve is known as holograph. Now, so if I make a horizontal tangent which just touches this curve, then the point at which this touches this curve is no, will denote the maximum rate of climb. And if I make it, uh, if I draw a tangent from the origin which touches this curve, the angle made by this tangent will give you the gamma max. Now, gamma max will give you the maximum angle of climb. Now point to be noted here is that maximum angle of climb is at some other velocity than the maximum rate of climb. So now another feature of this photograph is that the length of this tangent from the origin will give you the velocity component v infinity or the v. So from this diagram we can see that the v is the free stream velocity of the aircraft and, and we can have vertical component and horizontal component of this velocity and vertical component is the rate of climb and this is what we are drawing in on this graph. So if I if I make this tangent on, on this graph, so this will give you the V and the vertical component will give me VV and the horizontal component will give me VH. V, v means vert, uh, vertical velocity or rate of climb, VH is the horizontal component. So the length of this uh, tangent will give me the air speed. So these are the features of the hodograph and this is a very important curve. This is all about rate of climb. In the next video, we will cover the effects of altitude on rate of climb. And then we will also see what is absolute ceiling and service ceiling. So I hope you like this video. So if you like this video, please press the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon. Thank you for watching Concepts Unexplained.